Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly webinar series where we cover a variety of topics that may be of interest to libraries. We broadcast the show live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time, but if you're unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's fine. We do record the show as we are doing today, and we um, you can watch the recordings at your convenience, and I will show you um, at the end of today's show where you can access all of those recordings. Both the live show and the recordings are free and open to anyone to watch, so please do share far and wide with anyone you think might be interested in any of the topics we have on the show. Um, here at the Nebraska Library Commission, we are the state agency for libraries, so we provide services to all types of libraries in Nebraska. So you will find shows on Encompass Live for public, academic, K-12, um, corrections, archives, um, anything and everything. Really, our only criteria is that it's something to do with libraries. We have book review sessions, uh, mini training sessions, demos of services and products, um, and just cool things libraries are doing. Uh, sometimes we bring Nebraska Library Commission staff on the show to talk about things we're doing here at the commission, but we also bring in guest speakers, and that's what we have today. Um, with us this morning is Beth Nelinski. Good morning, Beth. Hi. And she is the executive director uh, for United for Libraries, which is um, for library trustees, advocates, friends, and foundations. And we have been working with United for Libraries um, for since before my time. <laughs> yeah, long time. A long, long time. Um, providing services from them to our um, library staff and boards. And um, we have Beth come on regularly to talk about what they're doing, and there's big changes coming with their learning management system. So um, I'm just going to hand it over to you, Beth, to tell us all about it. Oh, I should also mention, sorry, with us also is Holly Duggan, who's our um, continuing education coordinator here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Good morning, Holly. And um, she's the one who's in charge of making sure all this kind of training gets out there. So um, she'll be here to answer any questions you may have as well. Um, but go ahead, take us away. All right, great. So I've got two screens up here. I'm just moving off the controls to the side there. So um, at any point, Krista or Holly, you can uh, jump in and if there's any questions in the chat or you want to clarify something, go ahead and feel free to, to jump in. Um, otherwise, we'll kind of go through things and it's a really conversational style. So if you have a question in the middle of what I'm talking about, please go ahead and ask that uh, and so that we can address that at that time. Yeah, so, and everybody um, who's on the line, it, you can just type into the questions section of your GoToWebinar okay. interface and grab your question from there. Um, if you want to use your own microphone and ask your question, just type in, I have a mic, please unmute me, and you can ask your question that way. Great, wonderful. So we have been partnering with the Nebraska Library Commission since I'm thinking it's around... 2005 is actually what I think is is the year, but for, for quite a while. And um, and of course the uh, your your director there, Rod Wagner, served on our board for many years, and um, and also was our president at United for Libraries. Uh, so it, you know, wonderful, wonderful relationship. We love working with you guys, and uh, you really take advantage of the resources, which is always good to see. Uh, love to see that engagement, and when you reach out for questions. So. Again, I'm Beth Nobolinsky, the Executive Director, and we also have Jillian Wentworth. She's not on this session today, but she's our Manager of Marketing and Membership. And, you know, in a small nonprofit office, you kind of do a little of everything, right? So you might reach me, you might reach Jillian. Um, you might have spoken recently to Trish McFadden, who um, is no longer with us. She moved out of state, uh, but uh, we're here uh, and available for you all via phone, uh, sort of during the nine to five Eastern time via email. And um, and of course you can reach out. We do check our emails evenings, weekends and holidays because we know everybody's got a day job or life during the day that's really busy. Uh, so we do check those uh, evenings, uh, weekends and, and holidays. I can tell you from many, many years of experience um, with this that people around the country do watch trainings on holidays. And not the ones you would just think like President's Day and Labor Day, but yes, even on Christmas Day and New Year's Day, we see those come through as watching training. So I know a lot of 
dedicated people out there really wanting to support their libraries and know that we're we're here as well to to help you out so you guys have been with us such a long time that you've transitioned if you've been working with your library you know since 2005 or even 2009 or even five years ago you know we've transitioned a couple of times to different formats and and each time it gets better i'm so excited this has been a dream of mine for a long time here at ala to have a learning management system so this is an association-wide learning management system which means that if you're taking any training paid or free or classes um, through any other part of ALA, you're going to see that transition to this one place too. And really beneficial for you as the user because you've got one stop shopping for your transcript, one stop shopping for your courses, uh, a new shopping cart uh, makes it easier to buy the courses, access the courses, track your training, all of that. So it's a really wonderful place to, to engage. So we're going to walk through it today and see how we've moved all of those resources into this one place for you. Um, it does I mean that you go ahead. That this, I think it's an important thing you mentioned too for people wonder, you know, who are doing other things beyond United for Libraries. This isn't just United for Libraries things, it's an ALA wide change. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. So if you're taking anything free or a paid course, whether it's through uh, one of the divisions, so PLA is in there, for example, a lot of you, Public Library Association, school librarians, you know, academic, everybody's in this one spot and uh, you know there's still some time as that getting moved over in there but you will find that as over the coming months that uh, everything will be in this one spot and i love the transcript feature you know it's just it's so easy uh it's teachable was a wonderful upgrade for us for two years uh, made things a lot easier but uh, the the new lms or learning management system is even better so you do need to log into the ALA website. So the Teachable login is not connected to an ALA login. We'll be assisting everyone who's already logged into Teachable in the past and getting you moved over into the LMS, even if you don't have an ALA website login. But that'll be something that's important to remember. We have single sign-on at ALA, which means that any of the services or, or anything we use, so if you ever register for a conference, or if you participate in ALA Connect, which is like our, our member hub, um, that, that's all single sign-on, right? So one or order from the store, um, that's all one sign-on. So if you already have a login to the ALA site, then you're set, right? That's already there. If you don't have a login, super easy to create one, and I'll show you that in a minute here. Now, this is a login is unconnected from membership in the sense that if you're a member, you will have a, a login to the site already. But if you're not a personal member, when I say member here, I mean personal member. If you're not a personal member of ALA, you still can have a free login there. So uh, just know that the login you use is the one that will tie everything together. So if you've been using a login to um, the site for your membership, and that's uh, you know there but you've been using a separate email address for your e-learning you'll want to consider whether you want those merged together or not because you you could have you know like a gmail or a work email but the the idea here is that it's that it's single sign on and all track together so we're going to start first and i'm going to move this off to my second screen. All right, so we're going to start first here just on the United for Libraries site, which um, you guys are familiar with. So uh, what you'll find here is that everything you're going to access is going to move off of this site into the LMS. When I go to that site in a minute, everything will be there. The tip sheets, the toolkits, all of that is hosted in one place. Makes it less confusing and more streamlined. So this is our United for Libraries site. We have this button here, statewide access, find your state. All right. And we have the states listed here. So we still have the register. You still come here to register if you're brand new to this. Um, and uh, after we do this today, you'll have two logins, just like up here under Michigan. So we'll have the login to Teachable because we're gonna have some transition time to move people over and then the login to the new e-learning site, right? So if you've never logged in before to, to access any um, of the trainings, go straight. We're gonna send you straight to the e new e-learning site just bypass Teachable. But Teachable will be there for a couple of months as we transition people over. And this is a hot question that always comes up, so I'll say it right now and repeat it again later. Any training you've completed on the Teachable site, we will be bringing over to the e-learning site that 
that record of, of having completed. So if you've watched all the short takes, they'll get all marked on the e-learning site as having been watched. You can watch them again as many times as you want. But of course, we want to make sure that if you're tracking your, your learning through uh, Teachable, that you have that credit over on the e-learning site. Just give us some time to get that moved over um, for you. So again, registration form here, um, and then we'll put the two logins on for you. All right, so um, let's see, I wanna actually go to, to here. Uh, let's start, uh, let's start at the e-learning site. So um, where can I post, so let's find, oh, here we go, chat. Um, sorry, I'm not as familiar with GoToWebinar, but I will type. So that's the, that is the, um, Oh, I think it only went to you. How do I? Oh, I sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. No, nope. you should be able to maybe change it to all audience or I can copy and share it out. Yeah, I don't see all audience. So if you can copy and share it out, that would be great. So that is the the e-learning site where, again, this is going to be all of the training from all across ALA. Some divisions are still moving some things in. We are still moving some things in as well. But this will be your one stop shopping. So when you come here, I'm not currently logged into, um, into this site, but I want to show you that process. So if I click log in here in this lower left, or I click log in in the upper right, the screen you will see is this log into the ALA website screen. Okay. So a couple of things here. You can um, if you know you have a login to the site already, go ahead and use your username and password and log in. If you forgot your password, there's a link here to uh, request the password reset. If you don't have an ALA account, there's a link to make one. So um, with either the forgot your username or password or don't have an ALA account, when you put in your email address, if you don't have an AL account, it'll tell you that. <laughs> and um, if you click the don't have an ALA account, make one and you put in your email address and you do have an ALA account, it will tell you that too. So it's nice that it's all integrated there. Um, but otherwise, if you know what your what your login is and you um, and you go for it, then you just put that right in and this I'm gonna pop to this screen. Whoops. Yeah, this one. All right, so this is a generic login we have, so we can see exactly what you see. So I'm going to log in with this generic, not generic that's shared, but for us here in the office. Um, so it's our kind of our student account. So now I've logged, well, I logged in. It was, sorry about that. I think it's because I have so many screens open. There we go. So you see I'm logged in as Nebraska statewide. Now, many, many, many moons ago when you guys started, you had this generic login for the whole state. So just to be clear again, this is like a student account that we use in our office so that we see exactly what you see when you log in as a student. Um, you will have your own login, so that will actually show your name up there in the corner. So let's take a quick look at the site itself. Your dashboard is what we're looking at right here. The catalog will take you back to what we saw a moment ago, which was a searchable catalog of all of the resources across all of ALA. So whether they're free events, um, you can browse the catalog, you can look under these uh, criteria or these uh, topics here, and you can also search by looking at information over here on the site. There is a calendar feature as well. Um, so uh, the couple of things in, in the calendar feature is you can actually create your own things as reminders. If you sign up for free webinars, they'll show up here as reminders for you. So it's an integrated calendar system. Also, if you take courses through other units that have due dates for materials uh, or for assignments, those will show up in the calendar also. So the calendar is a really great feature. Transcript is what I meant when I said the one-stop shopping and the one-stop place to get your information. So right now, this account is only registered in our Nebraska statewide um, course, uh, and then uh, this will actually show you any of the any courses that you're registered in. So as part of the statewide group membership, you have access to 40 plus on-demand webinars. You have access to a whole bunch of different stuff that'll come up here as you as you go in to take them, they'll show on your on your transcript. Um, and so on the transcript, they'll tell you when you started it, if you've completed, how much time you spent in the course. Um, so uh, I just put this one in last night for us to, to play with. So you can see that I'd spent um, one hour, 21 minutes and one seconds in the so far in this course. Um, 
it will tell you what um, your status is. If you're like this one, I haven't started anything, but here I have. Um, and it will also tell you, don't worry about score or credits, you know, those because these aren't credit based course. But if I've earned a certificate, then there will be a button right here where I can click and get my certificate. So you can get certificates in two ways. You can go into the, the course that has the certificate. So if I've completed challenges and crises, I can go in there and get my certificate. But I can also just go right to my transcript and click the button and download the certificate as well. Really neat feature. You can actually download your entire transcript. So wow. as an individual, you can download your transcript uh, to an Excel a CSV file, which you get important to Excel um, or as a PDF. Right. So that is a, a fantastic feature that I think is really beneficial for for uh, learners using this up in the upper right. This is uh, links about your profile. So again, remembering that you're probably, you know, you may take things through other parts of ALA. Um, so, so some things you take may have grading. We don't grade at all in this system, but it sits, it's there because some uh, courses are graded, right? Uh, there's a messaging feature where you could message me, you can message other students. Uh, so that's nice. There's an order history if you do buy something outside of the statewide group membership. And we're gonna talk about signup codes in, in just a moment. Um, one thing to know is that if you change information in your profile here, it doesn't change anything back in the main ALA database. Um, so uh, any changes that you need to make to like an address or you wanna change um, any other contact information, you'll wanna change that back in the main ALA uh, database and that's through the ALA site. Once you're logged in, you click on my account and that's what this looks like. Update your profile, username, communications preferences, et cetera, okay? So that's kind of the overview of the administrative part of the site. On the left hand, then you have dashboard, catalog, calendar, transcript, and my courses. And when you're in a specific course, all of this will be pushed below. So I'm gonna click on the statewide group membership. And what you'll see then is that what we now have is the um, is the menu. This gives you this option. I like this. So you'll be able to do this yourself. It, when you come to this course after you've been in it, you can set this. It'll ask you one time. Do you want to be, um, well, if you click remember my preference, do you want to be sent to the beginning of the course, the furthest you viewed it, or the most recent page that you've gone to? So I'm gonna click remember and say the most recent, but we've set this up to give you that flexibility of how you as the individual want to choose that. So if you always wanna be taken back to the, the homepage when that pops up the first time, click the remember my pre preference and say course start. Um, so now what you'll see over here is the, the menu for the course that you're in, okay? And below, Remember how I said it would be pushed down? That's the other part of the menu that's been pushed down, right? So the dashboard's still here, catalog, calendar, transcript, and my courses. But this is now the, the uh, menu for the Nebraska Statewide Group membership. You'll see you have your breadcrumbs across the top as well. And as a user, you actually, um, uh, you can actually change a couple of settings throughout. So if I wanted to update my course return page so that it always went to the beginning or it went to the last viewed, that's in that settings wheel right there. And you'll see as we go through, there are some other opportunities to change some settings as well. I won't go into detail a lot of them because I think mostly yeah, it's playing around that to get that's the uh, discovery part of what you can change and not. But I wanna say up here in the upper left where you've got these three little lines, if you click that, it takes away your left-hand navigation and then you can actually have a larger on-screen right in front of you. So some people really like to, to do that and then just operate right from the menus that are here or from the breadcrumbs. Um, also, if you, uh, the mobile site is very user-friendly uh, and so you probably recognize that like the three little lines is very much a mobile site feature when you're trying to access a menu on a mobile site. So if you're on the mobile, if you access from a device, um, it is a responsive site in that it will resize this screen to your uh, device that you're using. And the, the menu won't be on the left, it'll be 
this little three little lines and click down. So if you come from your from your phone or from a tablet, uh, again, mobile responsive site, it will resize. The left nav will disappear and you would access that from this three little lines. But on the full, I'm on a computer now, so I can have that left nav fully show. Any questions so far before we jump into have how this is set up? Let's see. I don't no. see anything. No, okay. maybe have questions. Just uh, put them in the questions whenever you think of yeah. them. And and you'll be getting emails um, from Holly um, as well. Um, with um, we're going to send you Holly, you know, a fl the flyer and the list of resources updated uh, that you can push out to people, and and then you'll update the website and whatnot. So from what we've gone over so far, uh, just it's single sign-on. So if you don't have an ALA login, you'll create one free, super easy. It's quick. Okay. Um, Second, uh, this is where all e-learning over all of ALA will be hosted. It is a mobile friendly site, so it will resize accordingly and your transcript will track all of your training all over ALA, quick and easy to get to and you can export it. So uh, I'm not entirely sure how your certification works at, in Nebraska and how the reporting works, but let's say for example that as individual trustees, you give your information about what you've completed to your library director who then shares it with the Nebraska Library Commission. If that's the way you do it in Holly, you can jump in and say otherwise. You can export your training at any point and give that to your library director. So, um, and Holly, if you have any comments or anything there, you can. Yeah, Holly, how do, do we, we kind of get it both ways, don't we, sometimes? Um, usually, well, sometimes board members report it themselves, otherwise library directors will report it. Um, but one question that comes up a lot mm -hmm. is, what about for boards who don't want to set up individual accounts? Sure. So you can still watch um, the trainings as a group, okay? And then there is a form in here, and I'll show you when we go into short takes, how you report. It's the same as it was through Teachable. So, and you can do that for any of the on-demand things that you, the whoever's the point of contact or the library director in most cases uh, would report when they watched it and who watched it. So then credit can be given that way. So that's possible as well. So yes, yeah, so a good point, Holly. This is set up as everybody can have their own login, go and get whatever they want at any time. But in those cases where a board wants to watch something together at a board meeting, at a board retreat, et cetera, there is a reporting option to do that. So then that will be um, can be uh, you know shared with the with the Nebraska Library Commission, and okay. we can talk on offline about sort of the best way to get that to the directors as well. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. All right. So excellent point. Thank you for bringing that up. So let's delve a little into how this is set up. Um, again, this is taking everything that was over on the United site plus our learning lives and getting it all under one menu here. So I'm going to kind of go over how it's set up and how you can access it from different uh, uh, points within the system. So first of all, if you don't know about our learning live, and uh, and hopefully uh, everyone here and those who watch have either uh, participated in one or now will in the future. Our Learning Live is a monthly webinar on the second Tuesday of every month at 2 p.m. Eastern. It is recorded, okay? So you only have to register if you want to attend live. It is recorded, and I'll show you in a few minutes where you get access to all those recordings. So this every month, month yesterday. Yes, it was. Yes, absolutely. So, and yesterday's was really interesting. I don't know if anyone here came on. It was on cybersecurity and I learned so much and it was brought to us originally by um, Kathy Selking, who is the director of the Toledo Lucas um, County Public Libraries Foundation, uh, because the foundation was impacted by the fact that this cybersecurity incident happened and how all you know their information and their emails and everything are hosted through the, the library. Um, in the case of a friends group, maybe your membership, you know, database or your website or your emails are hosted through the library. Uh, so it was a really, really interesting webinar, and the recording will be posted tomorrow. 
Um, January was on friends and foundations working effectively with the library, and we haven't confirmed our speakers yet for March, so I, I can't announce the, the, the speakers yet, but that'll be coming soon. And I, and I say the, the topics are varied and, and a lot very interesting, so I'll show you again where you can access those. So as a statewide group member, you have free registration to the live attendance and then also to the on-demand in so long as Nebraska partners with United, they'll be there for you to watch, okay? So um, so everything's gonna be one-stop shopping through here uh, with the one exception of the, the listservs that we had trans, uh, transitioned into ALA Connect and I'll show you that. So the menu, uh, I've tried to really set it up in a way that, that makes sense. And, and so we'll walk through that. Any questions do jump in and let me know. Uh, we have an overview section e-learning. So e-learning is going to uh, include learning lives, live webinar on demand, and the trustee training. In the member center, we have the overview of our benefits, which would have also our discussion groups, grants and awards, sections for the boards, and a section on the newsletter. Resources is where you're going to find um, specifically advocacy. Graphics is currently the friend or library. Uh, publications are our toolkits and practical guides and books and then the tip sheets and then we have a quick links feature where we can um, put and I'll click I'll click there first uh, where this will be updated on a regular basis so that it's new and upcoming and find it fast you'll see that uh, right now it's got uh, watch the February learning live watch January learning live register for upcoming learning live um, Again, just sort of the things that are looked for the most frequently. And uh, so as the learning lives each month changes or there's a new live webinar or something new to promote, you can find that under new and upcoming and find it fast. Of course, you can find it in the regular menu as well, but we want it. These are kind of quick links to find the most popular things at the moment. So we're going to go back home. So those quick links will change. Um, all right, so let's jump into the overview section. Now you can use the menu that's here to navigate. You can use the next. And then when I move to the next page, there'll be an option for a previous as well. You can also use the main menu that's over here on the left and you can use the breadcrumbs. So we've given lots of ways to find things. All right, so let's go to the overview section and talk a little bit about that. Um, and I'll also show you then that there is yet another menu because again, people come at things all different ways. This is um, like a, a tree of all of the, the, the options as well, okay? So we, we've got a multiple ways for you to come into things. So here um, on this overview page, I've put a top 10 resources. Uh, so the most asked about options that we have and the links will take you directly to those areas. Um, so for right now, we've got a catalog of the resources I'm going to show you in a minute, which is going to be, I think, a highly used page here. The Learning Live, which is to register to attend the next one or to watch on demand. Um, trustee training, uh, our tip sheets, the access to the recordings from our virtual in 2020, discussion groups, ask a trustee, 101 plus great ideas, toolkits, and practical guides. So that might change over time if there's something else hot or new that we want to put there. Um, but again, you'll find everything within the menu. So under overview, remember I said previous would show up. So next is going to take you to the first child of the menu you're on. Previous will take you back. So we have a catalog of resources. And this is set up in Moodle, if you're familiar with Moodle at all, as a, as a glossary. So when I click there, and it takes me into the catalog, um, this is the title. So every tip sheet title is in here, every book title in here, every webinar title is in here. And then when I click on that, it'll show me the description, and then I can go off to the actual resource. You can um, browse alphabetically, you can browse by cate category, so if I um, also search, if I want to search, there's categories in here, uh, for example, on-demand webinars, and I look at all of those. And you can also search this catalog as well. So this is uh, a, a, a good way, it's kind of an index that then links off to the resource as well. All right, so uh, I'm going to go back to overview. 
then make it, I want to share um, information about the data reporting. Okay. So anything that's included in the Nebraska statewide group membership is part of the reporting that we give to the Nebraska Library Commission. So that means that if you've registered to come in and, and into this, um, if you've completed any of the courses that are part of the statewide group membership, any of the feedback that you give, it is anonymous, but it is, we do take that Nebraska feedback and um, it'll be available to the state library and any uh, of the tip sheets or other things that you, that you download, it will just say that you accessed it. It's just got like a check mark on the report that they will have. So um, anonymous feedback. Um, otherwise that you've, uh, it, you know, the information's there as to what you've accessed, what you've completed, et cetera. That's only for the statewide group membership. If you do anything else with ALA or any of the other divisions, that is not reported. So if you take a free webinar through PLA or you take a paid webinar from the newest division core, that is none of that data is reported. None of it is available um, to United for Libraries. None of it is available to the Nebraska Library Commission. That's on your own. So I wanted to be sure to address that up front, that the data collection and reporting is the same as it's been all along, right? So that we can give that information to the Nebraska Library Commission. There's no difference in there, uh, but to reassure you that any other course that you take outside of this statewide group membership, any other free or paid webinar is not reported. That is your personal information there. So if you want to download your transcript and take off anything, you know, as an Excel file and take off anything that you completed on your own that's outside and there's no reason to report it, you can do that as well. And that's what is noted here, okay? So we have, and this page here, um, Holly can update. So she and I will be meeting separately on how to do that. I've put some initial information about the Library Commission with a link to the site and links on your continuing education. But if she has anything that she wants to do like announcements or whatnot, she can put that information here. Um, and she can change this page as well. So there's some links back to the, the commission site there. Um, also under the news page, this is where you'll see either things that we post. Um, and Holly also has the ability to post things here as well. So if she's got, you guys have got, uh, you know, an Encompass Live, I would say, you know, you could put something on there about Encompass Live. If you've got one coming up that's specifically geared at trustees, friends and foundations, put an announcement here, uh, et cetera. So this will be kind of a, a rolling news thing in that the newest thing will be at the top. Um, this is actually right now um, a, a note that we've got a page of compiled resources specifically on program material challenges and EDI. All right. And that's that's what that is under there. And then under the help menu, it um, is just letting you know uh, that you know how to contact us. And then there's a frequently asked questions that will build over time. So that's the overview menu. Um, it, you probably won't be in here a lot, but you might be in the catalog of resources frequently to find things. Um, now I can either go back to the left to go home or to scroll down and go to one of the other top level um, areas. Um, I can also use my uh, breadcrumbs up here. And remember, we've got that other menu down at the bottom as well. So multiple ways you can get to the next uh, set of information that you want. So let's talk about e-learning, right? That's, that's really where a bulk of things are happening uh, these days. Uh, so learning live, live webinars on demand and trustee training. So the landing page has got some some uh, just information about these. Let's look at Learning Live. Um, so in addition to the breadcrumbs, which are up at the top, <laughs> I also have put on the page header like a repeat of the breadcrumbs, just so it makes sense and you don't have to scroll up and down all the time. So Learning Live, um, it, this is, I've actually already put it in here, but it's not posted, but the recording will be posted tomorrow. Um, and the Learning Live registration is open for, for March. So let's talk about that for a moment. Um, there are two ways that you can register to attend live. Now, if you're not going to make it live that day, you know you aren't, don't worry, you don't need to register. Regist I know a lot of times people register for um, a webinar because they want to get access to the recording link or the resources, whatnot. You don't need to do that. You can, and that's fine. You'll just 
and not come and you'll get an email saying here's where it's posted um, but you don't need to take that extra step because the on-demand stuff will already be posted here for you within two days of the live webinar so to register for the live and we'll go ahead and go look at that um, it's going to open up a new window here um, and we'll see right here is is marches and as i said the title in Remember, every time you go to a new course, it's going to let you opt to set your to set your uh, place that you want to go to. So I'll click here to register to attend live. Okay, and I click pre-register, and I've been successfully registered for the Zoom. You'll get a Zoom confirmation email with your link. All right, so you don't have to fill out a form with any additional information. You just go right there and click that pre-register. You are pre-registered. Okay. And you can now, do that obviously. Yeah. You don't even know what the topic is, but it's still there right. kind of as a placeholder for that. It so is that will be happening and get get, get yes. yourself on the list now. Yep, and, exactly. You know. Some people come every month, regardless of the topic. So um so we'll have the topic up. I think those speakers will be confirmed probably by tomorrow or Friday, and that'll be up there anyway. Um, again, that is and the I two. I push that info out on to our um, media too. So anyone wondering, you'll see as when I get it within a day or two, I send it out on our mailing lists and post it on our blog so that it goes out in all our social media and everything too. Yeah, that's great. It's fantastic. Um, so when you when it comes to that day, you will have your Zoom link in your email. So you'll get the Zoom confirmation. You'll get the one week reminder and you'll get the one hour reminder, just like you always do for Zoom. You can also come in here and watch the Zoom. So you have options you can come in here and watch it you can go uh, through the link you get in your email to watch it now let's say that um you happen to see the press release and and you and you're like oh i'm gonna follow that link and to the uh let's see learning live i think it's hyphenated you follow the link in the press release on the website or through social media you actually will end up coming to this page right here um, and you'll see that here's the link to register. Now this will take you to the form you've typically seen where you're gonna put in your name and your email and your library and your state, right? All of that, that's fine too. So if you come at it from this, that's fine. You'll still get registered. You'll still get your Zoom confirmation emails, but mm -hmm. remember that the easiest way is here because you didn't have to enter any other information. Like it's, we already know. Right. So you've got the, the two ways you can come at that, either through the system where it directs you through the LMS or if you happen to come at it from another way, then then you'll find it here. If one of your board members or volunteers or staff members is not in LMS yet and they've registered through this process through the site, then they'll get as part of accessing the on demand, they'll get registered in the LMS. So you'll still access it through that way. Any questions on learning live? I don't see anything. Anybody has anybody ever watched any of them? I mean, I know we, I know we have. I know we don't have a lot. Yeah, yeah. So, and we do get a lot of questions. I've actually yeah. have received multiple questions um, in this last few months. Interestingly, of uh, people wanting to watch recordings because they couldn't. Yeah. Think, Where's the recording? Is there going to be a recording? Yes, yes, yes. Yep. And. Yep. Um, I really like how seeing how it is in the new system, it's so much easier to find with everything separated out. I remember in the yeah. previous one was there, but it was like a big dump of it like here's everything and you've got to through it find the thing <laughs> you want. Having it how it's broken out in here is like, oh, I love it. <laughs> it is, it's great. So even better, like we've got it right on the menu here too. So learning live, there's 2022s and there's all of 2021 as well. Nice. Right. So um, if I click on the 2022, then it's just going to give me the, the months there, March, February, January. Um, if I were if I click on the 2021, um, sorry, I double clicked that there. My mouse has been has been a little funky today. So my apologies. Some of the clicks are getting odd. Again, there's that summary of 2021, but you can always go to it through the drop downs as well. Okay, so look at some of the, the, the really popular ones for 2021 was December, Library Boards, Intellectual Freedom and Challenges, 
virtual and hybrid fundraising, making the ask for end of year giving. The gift acceptance policies were huge. And we have a part three coming, I think in April, which is gonna be about um, equity, diversity, and inclusion. That lends with, um, with reviewing your policies. Uh, so there's a part three coming. So look, you've got all of these great recordings in here. So let's take a look at one of those, for example. Let's, well, let's go look at, for example, gift acceptance policies two. So when I come here, I've got the description, the presenters, then I go down, I've got the video, okay? The resources, the slides, the feedback, and then where you get, how you get your certificate. So let's talk a little bit about those. The little box that's over on the right will have a check mark after you've completed that activity. Um, it, it's not, there's no grade, nothing like that, but people kind of like to see whether they've done something. So we let, we let that show for you. So if I click on the video, it's right here in the system. Okay, so the video is here. If I want a bigger screen, I can either take my, I remember those three little lines in the upper left, I can take my left nav out, um, but you also can full screen the video as well. So I could full screen the video. You do have some settings you can change with the speed. Some people like to listen to them faster or slower. Uh, and of course, every speaker is a little different, so you can change the speed to be a little slower or a little faster. Um, and you play it right here in, in the system. So that was the same in Teachable, you played it right there. I don't, and I think the speed settings were there as well. Um, but again, you can full screen it. You can also take away your left nav. You have the option there. I think right? that's so the video is like Vimeo that you're using to do the video on. Yeah. Yeah, it is on that Vimeo, yeah. Embedded into whatever system mm -hmm. you're using. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So you watch the video um, video there and then, um, oops, I went too far back. My apologies. That was my fault. Um, so let's go back into that one. I clicked in the, uh, I clicked in the, sorry, in the uh, breadcrumbs and went too far back. Um, so we also have resources. Now it's not checked off because I didn't watch the whole video. Right. So when I watch the whole video, it'll be checked off. So resources, most most months we have some resources to download. Um, and uh, in this case, we just downloaded the list of links right, that were here. So these were all links that were shared during the during the session. Um, and then we also have the slides as well. So if I click on the slide and you see the check mark. There's the check mark because I because I opened it. Right. And then the slides also. And depending on your settings, it may either um, it may either open it like it did here, or it may download it. It's depend that's your browser settings, not not here. So you may have that you know that things like that download to your to your site, but you could download either one of them. So feedback, um, you don't have to do the feedback to watch the video or download the slides or anything like that. But we do have it set up to um, that. You, that you don't give the feedback until you've watched the video, right? Because we, we want to be sure that the feedback we have is a good, clean data set that you've actually watched the video. Um, the feedback is just a couple of, of simple questions in here. It's not going to be, I don't think I can even say it. Yeah, it's gonna take me right to the video. Um, but we're asking you, it's like five very simple questions. Um, it's uh, the four, or sorry, I think, sorry, seven questions. The four questions that are part of anything that's IMLS, Institute of Museum and Library Services funding. So as a result of this, do, do I feel better prepared? So those standard questions, then we ask you to rate the session and rate the speaker, and then there's an open comment section. You are asked for your state and you're asked for your role. That's how we give the anonymous feedback to you know, to Holly for all of the courses that you take that are under the statewide group membership is because you've selected Nebraska. And then when you select your role, it helps Holly look at that data from a viewpoint of how trustees thought about something or friends or foundations or directors, right? And then we have what's called this credit claim. So to get a certificate, you actually will need to claim the credit and it comes up saying hours of learning on it um, and then that's available to then get the certificate and download the certificate so what for once you earn a certificate again you'll find it in here you'll also find it in your transcript so it'll be in both places in the course itself and in the in the transcript so all of these on demand for um, learning live are, are set up in that same format so if i go to january i'm going to find it exactly the same way there's my description, 
my speakers, my video resources, slides, and then feedback, et cetera. So if we look at, Mar at um, yesterday's, it's not loaded yet. It comes up, uh, we load it up tomorrow. So it'll say here, it says recording available, Thursday, February 10th. And if I click on March, what's gonna be there is actually the link to register, which we already did and I showed you, right? Okay? So that's learning live. Any questions on the access to this? Captions and transcripts available on recordings. Um, uh, transcripts available as a download. I think they're not on the recordings at this point, but they are on a download. Live webinars as part of your statewide group membership. Of course, you here's the learning live, um, but you also have free registration to uh, paid webinars that we do. So the ones that are, we have three of them coming up. And uh, in fact, I have a committee meeting after this where we're setting some dates and times. There is a town hall for library boards and directors on intellectual freedom challenges. Uh, it's happening all over the country. I'm sure that many of you are seeing this if you're not experiencing it yourself. A lot starting in school libraries, but as I tell everyone, it's, it's happening in the school library in your town. It's coming to your public library too. Then we have a two-part series called Keeping Governance on Track that's coming. The first part is with a parliamentarian who is going to give uh, best tips uh, or uh, best practices and tips to be prepared, how to um, structure your, your agenda, your board meetings, et cetera, to uh, hopefully preempt problems and disruptions from um, either uh, people from the community or perhaps a board member who uh, is uh, has been disrupting because of disagreements with policies or whatnot, but how to really stick to parliamentary procedure and, and so you can achieve the governance responsibilities that you have. Um, as you can probably see on social media, disruptions from outside have, have really impacted boards of all to have school boards um, and library boards on being able to actually conduct their business. The second part of that, so she will give, she will give um, information on ways to preempt you know what you need to have in place with your uh, with your parliamentary procedure and your your procedures, and then also tips for how to handle those disruptions. Um, and then the second part will be a mock board meeting where we, we will actually have people doing those disruptions and then somebody handling it in the moment. So so you get to see some you know some acting out there as well. So those dates and times will be coming. Same thing. You'll come in here. You can register them for them through here or if you have to click in through a social media link or through a press release on the United site, same as, as Learning Live, you can go through that form, we'll get you into the LMS, or you can actually do it through the LMS as well, it's your, your option. So, um, on demand is where this all these 40 plus webinars are. Uh, so again, you can find that listing of them in that catalog of resources, and then they're all um, here available to you as well. So all the on demand will actually come up as a separate course. So when I go over to my courses, and you see challenges and crises and trustee academy and all of these, these are where I've clicked through from this on demand catalog. So let's look. I'm just going to pop to to trustees here um, so this is going to give you a list of um, of on-demand webinars now some of these may be repeated under a friends list and a trustee list or a friends list and a foundation list it doesn't mean you complete it twice we just have it double listed so you find it kind of wherever you're coming in from um, really great one if you haven't seen is our challenges and crises preparing your board of trustees with two libraries that faced issues one was um, a challenge to uh, drag queen story time and the other one was a publicly broadcast uh, board of trustees meeting with some um, very unfortunate uh, remarks from a, a board member and how they handled that so uh, really great great webinar to watch um, so you just click right on the, let's go to one that I haven't clicked on friends and trustees under 40 recruit them retain them engage them so I click right on that link and it's gonna take me to that course, okay? And all of these on demand are set up the same way. Introduction, presentation as the video, handouts, the evaluation you can't get to because you don't do the evaluation until you watch the video and the certificate. So on the learning lives, they're kind of vertical in format. Everything runs down on one page, these separate courses because people might come into them from 
who aren't part of Nebraska or a statewide group member, they might, you know, come into it from a different way. Um, but again, you proceed right through that. So if I click next, it's just going to take me to the video. Right? And you can see that I'm in the friends and trustees under 40. Um, if I look over here. All right, so let me go back to our statewide group membership. Again, there's like 40 plus webinars in there you can go through and do. And they'll show on, yeah, <laughs> they'll show on your transcript as well. And then um, the check mark only comes up here when you've completed that whole course on the side. So it doesn't get checked just because you clicked over there, it gets checked when you've completed it. And again, you can watch those in a group setting too. Trustee training. So this is the short takes and the trustee academy um, so if i click to go into short takes and i'll show you where um, you can do that bulk watching form so right under introduction we have this group viewing form so let's say you want to watch these you complete this if two or more people watched a short takes for trustees video together from a single login in the same place at the same time basically if you're an individual watching a short takes for trustees video you don't need to fill out this form this is only if uh krista you're the library director holly you're the trustee and you're and i'm a trustee and we happen to be at you know at a, at a meeting or we're in the library together and we're watching it from one one computer together right and so uh, Krista is library director, you'd fill out this form and list that Holly and I joined you in watching. So it's just a Google form with a one person fills it out in this case in my in my scenario it would be Krista, the day that you watched it, the approximate time that you watched it. Um, and we and we asked the the setting um, because we're trying to that's just for general feedback. How are most people doing it? Are they doing it in um, a retreat in a before you know special session before a board meeting as part of the board meeting? You let us know what videos you watched and and uh, and who they are, right? The email address um, so we can give the credit to them and then um, submit that so this can be either that krista you know holly and i did not want separate logins right so you're handling everything it also could be that holly and i have separate logins but as a board we watched this video together right so krista still fills it out because then we go in the back end and we mark it off that it's done. So then if we all watched what it means to be a trustee together, but, Chris, but Holly and I have our own logins, when Krista submits that, then our staff is able to go in and mark for Holly and Beth that that video was watched, right? So you still, um, so it's either way. Individual logins, people have them and you, and you watched as a group, then we do that back end piece of giving everyone credit um, and then or um, you're, you're, you're the only person as library director or assistant director or whatnot and you watch as a group and we give you credit so you have that that ability um, and then uh, again the similar setup for every everything here you've got all 10 videos in short takes You've got, they're all here, um, and you've got all the resource guides that you can download um, as well. That'll come up with all those PDFs, um, and you can download them also as one entire uh, PDF also. There is, so there's all of them here, and you can download them as all resource guides. There is an evaluation and a certificate option. Um, I'm excited to let you know that we are um, working with a, um, with a consultant, with a, um, a learning design consultant, curriculum designer, uh, and in the process of adding two new topics to short takes for trustees, and um, one on the, uh, the you know, specifically on intellectual freedom and challenges, one specifically on EDI, equity, diversity, and inclusion, and also uh, revamping all of the other ones as well. So we'll be doing some in-person recordings this summer at the annual conference in DC and uh, rolling out some new videos there. I'm super excited about that. I know we've got five, about five minutes left, so let's, uh, I'll just quickly show you. These I think are the, the ones most people are going to. Um, the, the resources are very uh, quick and easy to get to. So let's go back here. It took me, remember, said I wanted to take me to the last place I was. Um, so resources has four categories in it. Advocacy, where we'll put advocacy-related resources. Right now we've got a link off to our power guide. 
um, and that this will go to the United for Library site because this particular resource is hosted there. Friend your library. I know the Nebraska Library Commission did some really fun stuff with this um, a couple years ago. We made some luggage tags and other things. As a reminder, you all get this for free. Um, it's a great value to you. You don't have to purchase it through the ALA store. So you've got these poster files and bookmark files and you can use that friend your library graphic as well. Publications are where you'll find the books, practical guides, toolkits, and um, some other resources you guys are familiar with. And then they're all just down, they're all PDF downloads, just like they were on the United for Library site, but they're in one, they're in a more concise place and easier to find. So um, there's the book, the two books, um, and then tip sheets. Uh, I know you guys are all very familiar with tip sheets too. So uh, they're sectioned out in trustees, friends, groups, and foundations. And just like on demand, you may find a tip sheet under more than one category because it's applicable to more than one audience. Um, and again, they are PDF um, downloads as well. So, you know, if I click on one, it'll download to my computer or again, depending on your settings, it might open in the window there also. And they have been redesigned. They've got a nice new um, header on them. Um, and I also let you know that we have right now, um, it's starting this week, a group of volunteers that are reviewing all of our resources. We're doing a complete audit of everything that we have, all tip sheets, all on-demand webinars, all publications, everything, um, to look for things that we either want to update, expand, um, it's time to sunset, or uh, redo entirely. So some um, that's all as part of an audit, and this summer we'll have a report of all the things that we'll be um, adding, updating, etc. So they'll be doing looking um, for holes where we need new resources, etc. Super excited about that as well. Now you probably noted that uh, there's a copyright under each of those, and the copyright it just basically says that in your state, this covers everybody in your state, right? So yes, you can download, print, and share with your library staff, director, trustees, friends, groups, foundations, etc. Yes, you can share with other libraries in your state. No, you can't share with anyone outside your state. <laughs> That's as simple, right? Your entire state is covered all across Nebraska, but don't send to a, you know, to a, a library director over in, uh, I'm trying to think of the state we don't, uh, currently California, for example, um, because you're getting access to these resources as a result of the Nebraska Library Commission paying for your statewide access, all right? So everything in one place, just member center, because I know we're coming up on the hour. Let me point out a couple of quick things there. Um, the Ask a Trustee articles that were really popular in our newsletter, they are available as a, uh, again, as like a database. So there's a database there of all those Ask a Trustee articles. You can download the archive issues of the newsletter. Um, we are in the process of launching a new e-newsletter. So you won't any longer have to worry about one physical copy coming that you're passing around. Instead, you will have, you know, all your trustees, all your friends, all, you know, everyone can register for the um, current e-newsletter. Or so for the e-newsletter e newsletter only? Or are you going to still be doing the print version or no? We're not doing the print version. However, what we are doing is, um, uh, uh, so there's a blog that goes along with the e-newsletter. So the blog will have um, stuff on it, the e-newsletter, and then the e-newsletter will direct you into the LMS for any of the resources that are highlighted in there. Um, we will have curated uh, articles and resources from BoardSource, which is a national nonprofit organization for boards of any type whereas United for Libraries focuses and specifically on boards for, for uh, libraries. And uh, very soon you'll see here a searchable database of all those great good ideas from the network, which are incredibly popular in our newsletter, as well as the ability to submit submissions for that as well. So we're just, we're tweaking some things on the, um, the functionality of it, and then that will come in here. And then remember I mentioned the, the listserv, which is now part of ALA Connect. I want to show you that um, real quick because it is, a, it in, is a, I just want to jump in here and say sure. um, yes we've just hit 11 o'clock but that's okay we okay. do not cut these things cut and compass live off just because we've hit our hour um, <laughs> we'll go as long as it takes for you to get through all the 
everything okay. you want to show, Beth. And if anybody has any questions, get them into your question section so you get them asked before um, we do wrap up for today. Um, of course, you All can right. always reach out to Holly um, or Beth with other questions later. Yep. Um, but if you want to get them asked right away, definitely. But um, we'll go as long as it takes. And we're recording this. Okay. So if anyone does need to leave just because you you didn't a lot more than as an attendee, more than the hour, we're recording. <laughs> you can always watch the rest of this later. Great. Thank you so much, Krista. And this is the last section that I want to show here. So the, everything is now moved into what's called ALA Connect, which is um, uh, it's a platform where you engage in, in the association in, in many different ways. Um, so if you're already an ALA Connect user um, and you click the, the link here, then you'll just be able to click a button to join any of the interest groups. So listserv is now interest group. Essentially, there's one for trustees, one's for friends, and one's for one for foundations. If you've never used ALA Connect before, um, then you'll actually um, you'll there's a pro, this will be the description of how how you go through that process. So um, what happens is that you have to go and log into ALA Connect one time. Okay, accept the user guidelines, and then behind the scenes, there's some magic that happens that says this person's in Nebraska, this person is eligible to be in this community, these little things run behind, and about two hours later, then you can go in and actually join those interest groups. But if you want to get access right away, you just connect with us and we'll do it manually. The, the caveat is you, we cannot accept your user guidelines for you. So, you know, each individual has to log in, accept their user guidelines, and then we can manually put you in that group on the phone, right? Or you send an email and we can manually do it for you. Um, the, that's the one caveat is that, uh, that you must accept the user guidelines first. Um, and we've explored that with ALA, but I completely understand that process that they want to make sure that you've accepted those user guidelines. So that's what this information oh, yeah. is here. Yeah. So again, you can if you want to do it totally without us, you'll log in with your single sign on login, um, accept the user guidelines and then go back about two hours later. You'll be in you'll be able to add those go into the trustees, friends and foundations. But if you want faster than that, then just reach out to us via email or phone. Um, we can do it right there on the phone with you. You log in, accept the user guidelines. Boom. We can put you in those groups. Um, unfortunately, it's just one of those things I can't make happen faster. Right. Um, but that that's the that base. This is basically um, um, giving you that information there. It's just explaining that. And then it can function like a listserv. So ALA Connect allows you to engage in sort of like a Facebook type of situation would be where you can just post comments and do it right there in the system. But it also can function just like a listserv where if you set your notifications to be like in real time, then you'll get an email when someone posts a question, you can reply to the email. You never have to go into ALA Connect. You can just do it all through email like a listserv did, um, but you'd need to set your notifications. And we have some trainings that will be scheduled on how to do that, as well as some downloadable instructions sheets. Um, if you're someone that prefers just to kind of see what's happening, you can get a daily or a weekly uh, summary digest. That comes in if you just want to read if you if it's you want to engage you know in real time then again you can set your notifications to come in real time and then just answer the email and never log into ala connect which is a nice nice option so um that's all that's one thing i couldn't get a workaround on sorry guys the best i could automate was this two hour so that it, it, it those are the two automations they run every hour and it takes two to get to get the um, the people in there who are not personal members of ALA. So um, yeah, so we'll get, you know, we'll get you in there. You can engage. There's a great library feature where you can upload documents to share and search for those. It's a really neat, but that'll be, you know, separate training people can sign up for or we'll, and we'll load an on-demand um, video in here as well for that. So everything's one-stop shopping except for ALA Connect is in a separate platform, but you can come in through here. You get can get a transcript. Uh, you can do group viewing um, and everything's available in this uh, one spot. So if you've been in Teachable, we'll, you'll hear from us to get you moved over. 
Um, and uh, again, you go to the same spot to register. Uh, and uh, you can go into Teachable still if you're in there. So if, if you want to get go into there, that's fine. Um, again, we'll we'll work with moving everybody over, and um, and then give that. Uh, we'll update your transcript for what you've completed over in Teachable. And this is something you had mentioned to me before when we were chatting that there will mm -hmm. be a few months of both still being available mm -hmm. as yep. everything transitions. Um, yep. So you'll have time. Yeah, exactly. To Give a couple of months. Give a couple of months for that, and uh, so we can help people and work with them and get them moved over. Um, I, you know, I think see, we're February. We say June. You know, through the end of June, we'll do that. Any new registrants will go straight to the LMS. But if you've already been in Teachable, you know, you can continue to work in there if you want to, um, and uh, and we'll we'll get you guys ported over. I think the convenience of the learning live and the succinctness of the menus and the catalog and all of those things are going to be nice draws to pull people over. Also, that transcript as well. So. I think so too. Yeah, I think it's a it's a a you know like you said, Teachable was fun, was good, but this is a great improvement. Yes, and yeah. um, and you mentioned it's on it's uses as it's um. It's, ba it's built on Moodle, correct? It is built on Moodle, and it's um, yeah, web course works. Too. Yeah, People are our... probably familiar. Do you guys use Moodle at the at the State Library? Yeah, Holly is actually in charge of that here, yeah. Yeah, yeah so the, it is built on Moodle. Um, so Holly, when we meet separately to look at various things, you'll be very familiar with all of the, you know, the activities and all of that stuff that's available and reporting and stuff. Um, and it's uh, so it, it's um, hosted by Web Courseworks is the company that built it and and hosts it for us. Um, cool. So it is neat and it's just exciting because it is all ALA wide, which means this is an ongoing resource and and uh, you know again fantastic for users to be able to get to their transcript. Right. And I think one thing you all that you had is when we went to the main page where we went to look at all the different states. Um, mm -hmm. Right now, it still just has the teachable link for us, but soon it will be changed to have the link to the new one. Yeah, I'm going to change that. Um, yeah. I want to wait till after this. So, yeah, I, I, I will do that. I go to a committee meeting and then I will add that so you'll have both of them there. Yep. Right. So, like Michigan. And, mm -hmm. Yep, and I have actually I already have a list too of all the people I compared the teachable registration with people who've already logged into the to the LMS so we can dump them right in. Um, the just like ALA Connect, the LMS requires um, somebody to log in first before we can manually add them. So which is not a problem. Um, when you go through this registration form process, and I'm sorry, we did miss that. When you go through this registration form process, if you've never logged into the LMS before, what you receive is a sign-up code. And I, my apologies, I, I actually um, missed that when I when we were going through. So if I go back to the dashboard, um, if you've never logged into the LMS before, we can't manually put you in the course. So in that case, you receive a sign-up code. Your email will have a sign-up code. It's just like a coupon code. You come here and you put the coupon code there. You click use code. It'll say, do you want to use this for Nebraska statewide group membership? You say yes. And you, in the email with your sign-up code, you get a PDF that has screenshots of that process. If you've ever logged into the, if you have logged into the LMS, we actually manually add you. So we bypass the sign-up code process. Nice. So, you know, we do what we can to make it easier for folks. Um, um, but if they've never logged into the into the LMS, again, it's those are the pieces. A, ALA wants you to accept the user guidelines first, which Pretty makes common. sense. Yeah, you've yeah. got to do all the legal part before you can use yeah. it. <laughs> exactly. So. Exactly. All right, guys, if you have any questions, reach out. I know you'll have the recording for this. Um, yes. We're going to do some mini, mini segmented trainings that will be posted in different areas in there of how to use resources. Um, and uh, and uh, don't, don't anticipate a change on this one because this is all ALA across ALA integrated. It's been a dream for many of us for a long time. So this is, this is where we are. And hopefully you guys will find some great use in there. And Holly, you and I can connect on um, getting you in as a teacher so you can get access to you know various report runs and things in there too yeah all right awesome great thank you so much beth um is there anything holly you want to mention before we wrap up about what's happening or no i don't think so pretty good overview yeah <laughs> 
more changes coming. Uh, you'll receive notifications. Our web pages will become updated on the commission site as well for everything um, as this all switches over to. All right. Awesome. So uh, thank you. Um, thank you, Beth. Thank you, Holly, um, and everyone for being here. I am going to pull back presenter control to sure. my screen so I can uh, do our, my little wrap up here. Let's see. There we go. Uh, and I did add the link to ALA eLearning, the, the URL that um, Beth had shared earlier to this uh, show description here, um, eLearning.ALA.org. Uh, that is this page here um, that I just opened up when she shared it. So um, when the recording is up, this description goes along with it. So you'll have a link right into the new, to the new page um, when that is done. So as I said, yes, this um, today's show is being recorded as we all are and um, it will be on our archives page. This is our main page for Encompass Live, and right underneath the upcoming shows is our archive shows, the most recent one at the top of the list, so today's will be up there. Should be done by the end of the day tomorrow at the latest. Um, we post our videos to our YouTube channel, um, as long as um, YouTube and GoToWebinar cooperate with me. <laughs> um, everyone who attended today and registered for today's show will get an email from me letting you know that it's here. Uh, we also push that out onto our um, mailing lists and our Encompass Live has a Facebook page. If you like to use Facebook, you can give us a like over there. We post reminders of here's a reminder of today's show, speaker info, when recordings are available is all on here. Um, we also use Twitter and Instagram. We use the hashtag Encump Live. So if you want to find us talking about Encompass Live elsewhere, you would use that. Um, here on our archives, I'll also mention this is you can search for through all of our show archives if you want to find um, a previous show or a top, see if there's been something on a topic you're interested in. Uh, you can limit it just the most recent 12 months if, if you like or um, do all of them. That is because this is our full show archives and I'm not going to scroll all the way to the bottom because it's the full show archives. Going back to when we premiered, Encompass Live premiered in January 2009. So. <laughs> 11, 12, something long, lots of years. <laughs> and they're all here. Um, as long as we have a place to host them, we'll have them on here. You know, that's what um, librarians do. We keep things for historical purposes. Uh, but do pay attention to the original broadcast date of anything. Everything has a date so you know when it actually happened live. Uh, many of our shows stand the test of time and the information is still good and useful, but some things will become old or outdated. Uh, information will no longer be accurate potentially. Uh, websites, services, and products might have changed drastically or no longer exist. Uh, links might not work, so just pay attention um, if you're watching something that's really old on there. Um, so that will wrap it up for today's show. I uh, hope you join us next week when our topic is the pros and cons of implementing OER at a small liberal arts university. Uh, Laura Hinman, who's from our Midland University Luther Library here in Fremont, Nebraska, is going to talk about what they did at their um, university for this. Um, so if you're at a small um, organization, this may be something very useful to you. So please do sign up for that and any other future shows. I've got some March dates. I'm confirming one right now, actually, in my email. I had a conversation going on. Um, so you'll see some more um, ones getting filled in on here. Um, also want to mention, talking about small universities and small libraries, um, Big Talk from Small Libraries is our annual online conference we do. All of our presenters are from uh, public school or academic libraries with um, a population served or an FTE of 10,000 or less. So this is for all of uh, to hear from all those small libraries. Um, the schedule is available. You can check our schedule and see every, every, all of our topics coming uh, that are going to be spoken about and you can register. So please do go ahead and sign up um, register for big talk and small libraries it's always the last friday in february so it's february 25th an all-day conference it is recorded all day so if you're unable to watch the whole thing and you want to watch some of the sessions later you'll be able to watch the recordings we have all of our previous conferences here going back to the first big talk which was in 2012. so That'll wrap it up for today. Thank you, Beth and Holly, for being here. Thank you, everyone, for joining us for today. And hopefully we'll see you on a future episode of Encompass yep. Live. All right. All right. If not, I'll see you, uh, see you all at a learning live, right? Yes. Come in. <laughs> Sign up for learning live. Get in there. Um, exactly. Get exactly. your board and, and trustees in there. Absolutely. All right. All right. Wonderful. Thank you so much, everybody. Take Thank care. You. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.